Welcome to Basic Fundamentals, Ohm's Law. Before we study anything about Ohm's Law, we need a basic understanding of how electricity works. Let's use the example of water. The water that most people get in their house comes from the ground. Then it goes to a water tower to gain pressure. That water pressure is similar to volts in electricity. So then the water pressure takes the water down to our house and it goes to our faucet. The valve that turns on and off the water is a resistance to the pressure. Thus, the water faucet creates resistance, similar to resistance in electronics. Now the water itself, that would be the current, which does have potential to do work. Therefore, water pressure is equal to volts. The actual water itself is equal to current, and the faucet is equal to resistance. In our next example, we have water coming in, which is our current. The water being pushed down the hose is our pressure or our voltage. The nozzle on our water wheel would give us a little resistance, and the work actually being done, the water pushing against the water wheel, would be our power, or in the case of electronics, watts. This is also a very good example of how a hydroelectric dam works. So let's talk Ohm's Law. This is the basic diagram for Ohm's Law. We have volts over current and resistance, commonly referred to as V over IR. Let's start out with a simple circuit, which consists of a battery, a light bulb, and a switch. So what does that have to do with Ohm's Law? Let's take a look. Our battery is 1.5 volts. Our light bulb in this case will be 500 ohms. Therefore, we have V over R equals I. So let's plug our numbers in. 1.5 volts over 500 ohms equals 0 0.003 amps, or 300 milliamps. Now let's just say, for example, we know the volt and the current, but we don't know the resistance of the light bulb. In that case, we use V over I, which will equal R. In our example, 1.5 volts over 300 milliamps equals 500 ohms. So we then know that our bulb is 500 ohms. One further example of this circuit, say we know we have 300 milliamps and our bulb is 500 ohms, but we don't know how many volts are connected to it. Then we would use I times R, which will give us V. In this example, 300 milliamps times 500 ohms equals 1.5 volts. Ohm's law is really that simple. There's one more formula in this arena, and that would be the power formula, which is power over current times voltage. So let's look back at our simple circuit. We still have our battery and our light bulb and our switch, but how much work does this circuit actually do? That would be our power output. So let's take a close look at power. Power over current times volts. What we already know from our previous formula is our volts are 1.5. Our current is 3 milliamps. So volts times amps equals watts, or 1.5 volts times 0 0.003 amps equals 0 0.004 or 5 watts, or 4.5 milliwatts. So now let's see if the rest of it works out. We take our power in watts, divided by the voltage, to equal current. So here we would take 0 0.0045 watts, divided by 1.5 volts, which equals 0 0.003 amps, or 300 milliamps. Or for current, we would do power over current, which equals voltage. In our case, 0 0.0045 watts, divided by 0 0.003 amps, equals 1.5 volts. And this leads us to the overall pie chart. Basically what this shows is from any two of the variables, you can come up with all four. Either voltage, current, resistance, or watts can all be calculated from this chart, which makes it very easy to do Ohm's Law. And that's basic fundamentals of Ohm's Law. With that, seven threes from N9LVS.